Kirsten Hetfield's family has waited for more than 20 years for some answers in this case. As you can see, Palma looked straight ahead, and when that verdict was read, he showed no emotion and did not look at the family. Kirsten's remains have never been found, but prosecutor Scott Rowland is hopeful they will find them someday. This video contains the interview of a man who got away with the murder of his eight-year-old neighbor for almost 20 years. On the 13th of May, 1997, Shannon McCrossan put her oldest daughter, eight-year-old Kirsten Hatfield, to bed before going to bed herself. At some time around 3 a.m., McCrossan heard a whine coming from the bedroom, but assumed it was her younger daughter who sometimes talked in her sleep. She found the bedroom door closed, which was odd because the girls normally slept with the door open. She pushed the door open, but didn't go inside. When she went to wake the girls the next morning, McCrossan discovered Kirsten was missing. The house was quickly swarming with investigators. They found a couple of spots of blood on the bedroom windowsill. They next searched the backyard, where they found more blood on a six-foot-high wooden fence. They also came across a pair of Kirsten's underwear. Police and civilians both formed search parties, but the case went cold after several months with no leads. In October 2015, advances in testing led to a DNA match. The blood that had been found at the crime scene turned out to be from Anthony Palma, who lived just two doors down from Kirsten. I tell you, any more, if I'm, I drink a lot of water. I had some stomach issues, and the dogs says drink water. It really helps with the indi it, uh, indigestion real bad. And it's just chewing, but I won't give it up. Um, but if I can sleep through the night or get about four or five hours without having to get up and pee. Yeah. About six I know, I know exactly, exactly what you're talking about. You know what I that's, mean? That's me. When we fly, we, we have family out of state, so we have to fly there. The day before I leave, I started dehydrating myself. I can't stand to get on a plane and have to try to pee. And it never fails. I don't know if it's the cabin pressure or what. I can go pee five seconds before I get on. As soon as it gets up in the air, I gotta go pee. You know, and everyone, you're walking down the hall, the aisle, trying to get people out of your way. Especially when you got really, really good. Yeah, so I've learned to just dehydrate myself like crazy before. It never fails. It never fails. It seems like I drink more at night. Whenever I go to bed, I have to have something right there. Because yeah, I get up two or three times to do my uh, my nebulizer. Uh -huh. And then you have to have something to drink to wash the yuckiness out and go down. My uh, grandson's got asthma real bad, and uh, he starts wheezing. Where he just, and we're fighting with the insurance company to get him one of those breathing things, so they can give him treatments at home instead of having to go pay a thousand dollars at the ER to get a breathing treatment. The insurance company says, "Well, no, you got to have a prescription from a doctor to get it." Mm -hmm. We're going. You do. Although both my machines were gave to me. Right. You know, I didn't have to. The, the, you know, the steroid stuff that you put in, you have a prescription, mm -hmm. right? Is that how that works? A, a butyrol sulfate and something. Okay. <laughs> He's going to be nice to you anyway. Well, I know you said no, but I always told you to be drinking water with somebody. And I'm offering. Wade and them have a little advantage over me, Tony. They've met you before. And, uh, the detective puts Palma at ease. This is going to be an intense interview, and having Palma stressed out and hostile from the beginning is not in their best interest. I want to kind of, I thank you for coming down here to talk to us. Well, you know, and, uh, as, a, I'm, as a state employee, you know, it's something we have to do. Well, we have to abide by all, all right. well, we appreciate law enforcement and in, all that. And here's where we're kind of bad. We're, uh, we're still looking at the Hurston Hatfield thing. And we're going back and we're talking to a lot of people. And I know over the years... You weren't there the first time. They said, down, were you? You know. No. Um, yeah. I was with Miller the, the last time I was to talk to you about the other deal. Yeah. 
you uh, over 17 years I know in my life I've changed a lot and uh, so we wanted to talk to you about if you can kind of tell me 17 years ago how your life was how that neighborhood was what was going on in that neighborhood I know I've talked I've read some of the reports that uh, from the interviews before and how it appears to me that you they call you Uncle Tony around there because you care about the kids you were feeding well, some of the kids yeah. basically when I moved nature. there lived there there was a bunch of older people that was like an I don't know, not a no retirement place, but most of the people in that area were old retirees. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I, being, I like doing stuff all the time. You know, I was always outside, and if somebody's working on their vehicle, got to go be busybody, hey, you know, and help them, or somebody's washing machine was broke down. And older people, you know, they can't, nights, older people, right. <laughs> you know, can't do stuff. And I've always been mechanically inclined, you know, where I could, figure stuff out, you know, right. or help them move this, or, you know, just, I've always been, I don't know about friendly, but neighborly, Right. and that being my first home, right. you know, I tried to make it where that neighborhood was my home. Yeah, well, did you help any of the kids over there? Well, well when the, feed them pizza? Yeah, I've stuff. always, there's always, that's you my Kool-Aid pit. house? Well, I don't know about Kool-Aid. That's always been my pet peeve is I grew up hungry. You know, and I don't, there's a lot of kids hungry. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, not where I'd go down my way, hey, you hungry? But I mean, you see kids, you're over there eating something, and they're just, right. you know, you see them draw, right. here, take it. Right. I can't stand that. Yeah. And I'm that like that now, I got two damn kids in my house. Grown boys. One, they, he says that when he was at his house, they they didn't he didn't eat from Monday to Friday till he got to my house. Wow. You know that that's one of the stories I t I want to turn my phone off so people yeah, can me leave too. me alone. While there are people who genuinely try to help children that may be struggling, it is also a common tactic for predators. It gives them an excuse to be around their potential victims, and the parents usually accept or even welcome their presence. And while these detectives have a very serious and important role to fill, sometimes it's easier to sit back, relax, and play as a detective instead. And you can do just that. With today's sponsor, June's Journey. Very fitting to my favorite niche. June's Journey is a free-to-play, true crime murder mystery game where you play as June Parker, a detective in the 1920s tasked with solving the murder of her sister. You'll need to search and find hidden objects and progress through the mystery, while each new scene takes you further through the murder mystery you're trying to solve. You also get to customize and fix your own property, further adding to the immersion of the game. I personally find myself playing June's Journey when I'm trying to relax and take a break from work. There are hundreds of hidden object scenes that will constantly test your problem-solving skills and help exercise your memory. June's Journey is available on Android and iOS mobile services, and even on PC, which is where I play it. So, if an unsolved detective mystery game sounds good to you, and you're looking to unwind while solving mind-teasing mysteries, click the link in my description below. Start playing now. Before well, we get started here, Tony, let me go ahead and I want to read you your Miranda warning, okay? okay. Uh, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you're being questioned. Uh, if you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish one. And if you decide to make a statement, you can stop at any time. And do you understand each of those rights, obviously? Do you? Having those rights in mind, do you wish to talk to us? Yes. Okay. As my partner, uh, Lander said, um, we're still working on the Hatfield case, okay? And there's some things that uh, we want to go back over with you. Um, we try to be as thorough as we can be on cases like this, and um, I'd like to go back initially over some of what you've already talked to uh, Detective Miller about in the past. I wasn't there. I'm kind of up to speed on some of it, but 
Um, my understanding is, is when Kirsten um, disappeared, you were still living there yes. at 1104, correct? Okay. Palma never moved away, which led police to suspect evidence was hidden on the property. Do you mind just initially kind of take us back to 1997 and go back over that, maybe that evening before and into that morning when all of it all kind of started blowing up and just best you can tell us everything you remember. <coughs> And, t and take your time. I know we're going back some, some years. Yeah, here. I know. Starting to get that old-timer stuff. But really the only thing I can really remember is afterwards, you know, when, you know, because it, it was just a, a typical day. You know, got off work, went home, had supper, watched TV. Because used to <laughs> being a landscaper, my yard was my pride. Mm -hmm. Everybody wanted to play in my yard because my yard was nothing but Bermuda. I mean, I, had, <laughs> I mean, I just had Bermuda grass. Sure. But I mean, not that they came over there, but that's what I did. I always, I always worked on my yard. Mm -hmm. and, and, and back then, you were, you said you were working at the Capitol? Yes. So, okay. So, you, you were very experienced at keeping the yard. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, uh, well, you know, got chemical license off the gap and all that. Mm -hmm. Do you remember anything about the, the day or evening before? You said it was just a typical day. You worked all day and then went home. you remember anything unusual about that evening that stands out to you? No, other than what I told them about, you know, seeing the white truck, you know, in front of their, the white Chevy truck in front of their yard. Okay. You know, I, I like I said, I didn't, I didn't have anything to do with those people. Didn't know them at all. You know, okay. it's not like I went, hey, yeah, you, you got your little girl? No, it wasn't nothing like that. Okay. I was, usually I was outside working on my yard, you know, either talk to the neighbors or kid would come by, Tony, can you fix my bike? You know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't like I'd tell them to come over or anything. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go to other people's houses unless, you know, I, I was needed or something like that. But everybody just got, oh, Tony will fix your bike and blah, 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 you know. And I tried to make it feel like, you know, that was kind of a safe place, you know, for, sure. you know. Because I had Tristy at the time. I, she wasn't there during that time. But I had Tristy there since she was, you know, small. And whenever she was there, you know, the kids would come and play with her. And, now, you who know, is Tristy? She was my, well, one of my girlfriend's daughters okay. that stayed with me a lot. Okay. So you... you had a good bond with Tristy, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah, yeah. But she and her mom. Yeah. Who, who was mom? Uh, mom's dead, unfortunately. Uh, Melody. Uh, I wonder which name she wanted to go to. How? Okay. How yeah, old is she Tristy now? Uh, Grown, I'm assuming. Yeah, about thirty. Okay. No, I, I we don't talk that much anymore because everybody's into this computer stuff and that's how they commun co you know, mm -hmm. communicate. But my daughter was looking on her Facebook and she'd send us a text that she was fixing to have a, or that I'm a grandpa. No. She had a daughter. Okay. You said you didn't know um, them. I'm assuming you're meaning Shannon and yeah. Kirsten. Yeah. Or and I couldn't even tell you how long they they'd lived there. Okay. I was going to actually ask you that. Palma tries to walk a thin line between admitting he did things for the neighborhood kids without saying that he went out of his way to be around them. Um, so you didn't know how long they'd been living there when this happened? And I, I, going to think, they hadn't been there very long. And, and tell me what you remember about that. Do you remember seeing them move in or anything? No. No. I'm trying to remember. I, there were a friend of mine lived in that house. Uh, well, I can't remember what his damn name is, but he had a uh, janitorial service, mm -hmm. Janny King, mm -hmm. and I'd visit with him. I helped him put the fence up around his house, you know, helped him. In fact, his boy come up missing one day. Really? Yeah. He was like seven or eight or younger than that, and we went looking everywhere for him. We finally found him. He was under the bed. 
with the snake pretty crawling underneath yeah. the bed. But I mean, everybody was freaking. We had Midwest City out there, and of course, you know, everybody in the neighborhood was out there looking. Me and him were, you know, going up street, you know, hollering his name, and then she calls. So, yeah, we found him. He's under yeah. the bed. That's usually where we start. You learn that early on in uh, FTO school. Check all the closets. Check check out in the boat in the backyard and shit. Yeah. You know. So you're saying this friend of yours lived at uh, the house where right. Shannon and Kirsten lived? Right. Okay. And was that immediately before them, or do you know? Do you remember? I don't remember, to tell you the truth. Okay. And I don't remember if after he moved out, if there had been somebody in that house before they did, or, or what. I don't remember. You remember that guy's name? I know you said you did William that. was his first name. Okay. I don't remember what his last name was. That's been a while back. And you said you helped put up the fence around the property. So are we talking about the yeah, stockade the fence in the fence, back? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you and William put that up? Yeah. Plank at a time. That's the old old school way. Yeah. You you know, make it look nice that way. Stick at the time, yeah. yeah. Well, actually we had to put it up twice because we had a storm come in and it blew one side all the way back down. So we had to go put it back up. <laughs> we got him to finally put the, the steel, the metal uh, holes. Yeah. Okay. So, had you ever been inside that house when that gentleman lived there, William? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you don't recall his name, but he owned or worked for Jamie King? I think he, he had a... What do you call it? You know, uh, anyway, yeah, a janitorial he, service. Yeah, it was a janitorial service, but you know, you can have a, a piece of that company, but you still be the company that you're your own boss. Franchise. franchise. There we go. That's the critter I was looking for. So you never, I, I'm assuming you probably saw Shannon and Kirsten running around the neighborhood and so forth. To tell you the truth, until that happened, I I, I think I seen the kid one time. She was playing with uh, uh, Crystal that lived up the street, but I don't remember. One of Kirsten's friends later testified at Palma's trial that he stood outside and stared at them while they played. She said that he gave me the creeps. If it was in that time frame or what. I don't I don't really don't because I like I said I didn't pay no attention. Okay. Do you remember ever like giving food to Kirsten no, or no. talking to Kirsten? No. Was she ever at your house? No. Anything like no. that? Okay. No. Although he has freely admitted that he gave children food and allowed them to play in his yard, he adamantly denies that this ever included Kirsten. An unusual reaction. If the other children in the neighborhood were there, it would make sense for Kirsten to have been there at least once. Palma is clearly trying to distance himself from any interaction with Kirsten. And do you remember I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm actually a leery guy until, you know, people start coming around. You know, I, I just, I'm not just, oh yeah, I'll be your friend, you know. No, not like that. Yeah. But I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have, don't, didn't pay attention to, you know, who all was there or who they were, you know. It, Things like that in my world just fall in place. You know, we accidentally meet. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I know you. You know, right. then, but no, never, okay. never. Do you ever recall helping Kirsten with her buy no. or anything? You don't no. remember any interactions with her no. at all. No, I know there wasn't any interactions. I didn't. I didn't know them at all. And I, like I said, I don't even know how long they'd been living there until that happened. Okay. Because I was always me. That was back when I was fishing. I'd uh, juicy come off of work. I load up my poles, go to Draper, and sometimes I'd stay there all night. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'd always have, you know, second jobs, you know, after after hour jobs, mm -hmm. either landscaping or anything, anything to make a buck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that Detective Miller talked to you this before, but am I correct that you said you had never been over there mowing for Shannon or no, working on her property or? Okay. Seems like that, that come up. Somebody thought you might have been mowing over there or something. In trying to distance himself, Palma has made a mistake. By not giving a reasonable explanation for why he might have been on the property, the presence of his DNA will be even more suspicious. Now, when he was asking, the, it's about something about a handyman, is what okay. he was asking me about. 
Okay. Well, do you remember ever mowing over there no. or anything like that? No. Okay. Did, while they lived there, do you remember ever being in the yard, the front or backyard no. for any reason? Okay. How about in the house? Nope. So there was never any time no. that Shannon asked for your help to no. fix this or that or no. mow the yard for me or... Okay. Just tell you the truth, the only, the only, and I didn't even recognize her when y'all showed me the pictures of her. Mm -hmm. That was the only time I could actually say, okay, that's, you know. I met her once afterwards. She was going up and down the street and, you know, she was still looking for her kid and you know I met her once so I gave her some money so she'd have gas money so she could keep doing what she was doing you know was this like in the day days after or yeah talking days about? after let, let, let me bounce back a little bit we got off a little bit off track um, I was kind of having you go back over what you remembered through the night uh, and I, I read over the the FBI notes that they took when they talked to you I guess there was some information about you hearing dogs barking. Yeah, I had a dog in the backyard. Dog, his name was Dog. About 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, he went to raising hell. So I just, you know, really, believe it or not, in my neighborhood, we still got skunks and possums and stuff like that, plus other dogs, you know. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why that woke me up, but because I usually didn't wake up, and, and usually he's out inside anyway. But it woke me up. And he was barking at that back fence, at our back fence. But at the time, as you walk out my back door, I had an old apricot tree. So unless you went out there, you know, you couldn't see. And I just hollered at him because, you know, thinking it was another dog. Because there was always, and traffic, there was human traffic back there. But usually yeah, there was other dogs, about. yeah. There was other dogs or cats. There was always animals through there. So I just, you know, I really didn't think nothing about it. I just hollered at him and he came in and I went back to bed. So you actually let him back into the yeah. house? Yeah. So you opened, what, your back door, I'm assuming, and let him in? Yeah. Did you go investigate? No. Did you look down the alley? No. Anything like that? No, because usually in the past, whenever I did, that's what it was, was, you know, either another dog or people use that alleyway, you know, to get through. Why, I don't know, because, I mean, I don't know where you'd be going other than from house to house, but there was always, not always, but there was, there was traffic. Okay. Um, and, and speaking of the alleyway, did you have any kind of a gate or anything that went out to it? So you didn't have access to it through your backyard? No. I, I mean, I, I think that would be, be ideal to be able to go out in the alley and you could back a trailer up and it just seems like everybody had a gate. Well, the house next door to me had didn't have a fence. So whenever I weed eat it or, you know, did whatever, because I always weed eat it, you know, two foot around from my fence, you know, next door and then that alleyway, which the alleyway was. Because I read your, your uh, statement, you said you saw your gate ajar. The detectives already know the answer to this. Not all questions are asked in the hope of gaining new information. Some are to test the honesty of a suspect and to gauge how they act when they are being truthful or lying. Which gate was that? Gate ajar. Yeah. You didn't have a gate on the back no. or on the side? Did you have a gate on the side of the house? Yeah, we got a gate. Well, it's, yeah, it's a gate, but no, it wasn't on the door. Okay. It, it, anything else that night after you let dog back in, did anything else occur that you remember? No, I went back to bed being dog. Okay. And then when did you first become aware of uh, Kirsten was missing and all that was going on? Well, the next day there was all that activity and I asked the neighbor across the street what was going on. They said they couldn't find Kirsten and I didn't think nothing about it, you know. Mm -hmm. I went to work and then I, I don't remember if she called me or I called over there or what. And they said they just want people back, you know, because they wanted to go to our houses and blah, blah, blah. So I clocked out and came back home. Do you remember what time it was that no. you clocked out, came back home? No. Was this morning? Was this afternoon? It was uh, probably mid-morning, something like that. Now, who was the friend that you were communicating with? It was, uh, and I don't, today, I don't know what her name is. Y'all showed me a picture of her. Okay. I think y'all showed me a picture of her. Anyway, of her husband, Don. Is this the Holseys, Tiffany Holsey and Don Holsey? I guess, yeah. 
I'm not sure if, if, if Mr. Holsey is down or not. Um, did you have somebody had called me said they was they was they, that we were wanted back at our house. Okay. So I, I came home. Okay. And then what happened? No, I just sat there. Did did any yeah. of our officers or the FBI or anybody come by? It was a FBI. Yeah. Okay. We came in, took statements, you know, walked through the house and you know wanted to go in the backyard and you know because I had a shed back there. He wanted to look in the shed and. Okay. So he did look through the house and yep. look through the shed? Yeah. You probably don't remember who that was, I'm sure. No. Okay. No. And did he, was he just asking you general questions about Kirsten and did you know her, have you seen her, that kind of thing, or? Basically. Did you write out a statement for him or did he, no, was he it just a conversation? I thought he wrote out a statement. Okay. But he asked me if he'd come in and wanted, you know, asked me what I knew, which at the time really wasn't anything. He wanted to, he said they was going through the neck, canvassing the neighborhood and, yeah. you know, asking mm -hmm. everybody and yeah. so, yeah. 17 years ago, Tony, were you experimenting with any drugs? No. Never did? No. I drink beer. That's it. Just drank beer. I drink beer. Uh, but as far as drugs, no. Was Kirsten ever one of the kids that you had seen, or was there any talk in the neighborhood about her being mistreated or abused or in need? No, because like I said, I really I yeah. had no inkling that they even existed until after that. Until I after didn't know. That, yeah. You had never seen her or anything? Maybe like once or twice and didn't think nothing about it. You know, just another kid. Yeah. Okay. okay. Speaking of 17 years ago, who, who all was living there at your house back then? Just me. Okay, so you lived alone. Do you recall, were you dating anybody? Were you, did you have a girlfriend? Me and Melody you were off and on. One of Palma's previous girlfriends had a sister that testified against him. She was eight years old when he dated her sister, and she says that Palma touched her inappropriately. Okay. Years. For years? And you said that was Melody Howe, right? Yes. And that's... What's her daughter's name? Tristy. She's got two daughters, Tristy and Robin. Tristy? T R I S T Y. S T I. And Robin? Robin. Did you say S T I? No. Why? Okay. Do you know what Tristy and Robin's last names are? Uh, Tristy's was Howell at the time. Robin okay. was married, I think, at the time. So she was going for something different. Would Melody come? Stay the night with you sometimes, oh, yeah. that kind of thing? Okay. But she didn't live there full time? No. But she, she, like I said, she passed away uh, about four or five years ago. That's, yeah. right. That's not good. Mm -hmm. it, um, it, as far as other people you hung out with back then, do you have any good friends or anybody okay. that you associated with mm -hmm. in the neighborhood? or? Oh, in the neighborhood? No. No. Okay. How about out? I mean, just generally, like who were your friends, best you can recall back then? I basically just people that I worked with. Okay. Up there at the Capitol? Right. No, no long lost pal from school or anything? Yeah. I guess you moved off from New Mexico and left down there. Yeah. You know? And I'm not the kind that goes to a bar, you know, if I'm not correct, I drink at home. I mean, I know I've, I've met a lot of people, but so you you would drink some, but didn't do any, didn't experiment no. with drugs, didn't do marijuana, anything. No. Did they drug test back back in them days? At your work? Or well, uh, they always hung that over on us, you know. But we never, we never had to got you a. Okay. So it was kind of the, the threat. Yeah. There was some of we say, what a... <laughs> you ever had any trouble with the law on you? Oh, yeah. Before? Uh, years ago, first degree burglary and assault and with a dangerous weapon. I think I told your partner that. Really? Back when I was a dumb kid. <laughs> How long ago was that? I was, I think, fixed to turn 18. Oh, so you were just a boy. Yeah. 
-hmm. and all about a, my girlfriend. Where was that? At? It's a, uh, Walters, Walters, Oklahoma. Oh, okay, up in Cotton County. Yep. And you when were I got out of Job Corps, I uh, they found me a job there in Walters as a diesel mechanic. Is that how you what your training was? I uh, actually I was training for an auto mechanic, for. but they found me a job as a diesel mechanic and. Uh, the counselor at Job Corps, he made some deal with the government that if the government or if the employer would pay half the wages, they would pay, you know, for oh, OJT. Right. Uh -huh. So it was a pretty good deal. Yeah, it was. I'm surprised that diesel, you didn't stay with that. Those diesel mechanics make some money. Yeah, yeah. but it's hard work. I mean, it's a, it yeah. can be harder than weed eating. All yes, those, I all can too. Some of the, some of them parts weigh heads for one of the burst styles was probably 200 pounds and you got you got a tire about that high and you got to get it up on that and get it you know on the block and then you're torquing stuff at 240 foot pounds you know laying on your back and it's it's hard in the last 17 years tony have you have you uh, changed much is this how you were 17 years ago just a hard working man yeah that's basically it change older wise but no and and I'm not the same person I was 17 years ago I matured a little bit and I wish I could say that life changes people you know as you get older you start recognizing things that you that you could handle differently than what you mm -hmm. if you had it to do over again you'd change you know I can truly yeah, say that's that that's the thing we can't we can't ever change it yeah. no you can't change what what happened but sometimes you can make things better I remember a few years ago I went to my high school reunion and I seen a kid that honestly I just tormented to death I made his and I was able to find him and the detective is trying to pave the way to make a connection with Palma by relating how he made choices that he regrets in the past he is also trying to use this illustration to make Palma believe that he would feel better if he told the truth this type of approach doesn't work very often, but for the family to have closure, it is worth a try. Make amends, I, I make amends and apologize and tell him, I, you know, that I was immature at the time and ask for his forgiveness. And you know, I, I think that by the end, of, he actually remembered some of the, the things I'd done, and we talked about it, and I, I felt a lot better, and I think he felt better at the end. I know I did when he said he gave me some absolution some forgiveness hey i know you were just you weren't very mature back then and you know well, it's good for your own self-respect too it is it is to, to get it out and i tell you what the weight and i don't know why god had put on me a burden of of guilt uh, i, I want to i don't want to use the word guilt but i really felt like uh, after i did that i had a, a new outlook because yeah. I wasn't, I picked on him, but I, I also got picked on too, you know, every kid does. But, and it helped me deal with my tormentors and forgiving them and uh, realizing, because I came from a poor family, I was white trailer, white trash, lived in a trailer park, you know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I didn't have the nice clothes and I had two pairs of blue jeans and PF Flyers. Remember PF Flyers? If I was really lucky, I got some. But point was that shoes or jeans? No, PF Flyers were black and white tennis shoes. They were okay. the first ones that you ran, <laughs> that you could run really fast. Well, when I moved to California, my problem was whenever growing up, I had crooked feet. Right. And the only thing that would fix that was cowboy boots. Right. So when I moved to uh, uh, Delano, California, I was the only kid in my school who had cowboy boots. I imagine. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't they all fun. had sandals and tennis shoes, tennis shoes and all that. But uh, you know, I, I I was very I felt very fortunate to be able to that he was at this reunion. And you know, we were a small class. There was only about fifty of us, so we all knew each other. And you know, he was dirt poor like me, and which made it even worse. You know, I should have been picking on the on the, the rich kid. On the rich kid, but I didn't. But, point being that uh, I really felt a lot better about it and even now after I mean that heck that was my 25th high school rest you know reunion that I was able to do that he still picks on me though so he really hadn't changed his way so. <laughs>
Let's see that he, uh, like, he asked for it. The <laughs> next week he's gone fishing. The week before he was gone fishing. Did you get to go fishing? Yeah. For a week? Yeah. Don't, don't I call it vacation. Because he like, because when he's gone, I <laughs> do whatever. <laughs> it's all right. It's my therapy. It's all right. Uh, actually, it is therapy. It's very good therapy. It is. I'm like you. I work. I mean, that's all I ever known was to work. But no, my wife doesn't understand that working is therapy too, especially. If, well, I've always I've always suffered from depression back when I was a young kid. So, and that always seems like working. I guess gets your mind off of whatever it is you're thinking about or, you know, whatever. So that's all I do is work. It gives you a sense of accomplishment, too. That's one thing we really... Well, especially when your, your, your folks tell you that you ain't worth a shit and you'll never amount to hell of beans and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I know. Showed you, then. <laughs> Still that, not out. that how you grew up in a tough environment like that? That's, that's a shame. I remember my dad, he never... I wrestled and went to state and dad never saw me wrestle you know and I asked him about it one day and because it bothered me year, for years and he goes well I never discouraged you from doing it well that hit you and he goes and I, he goes my dad would down there on the farm Paul oh, he was a rough man you know he would browbeat those boys so dad has progressed to He's better than his father. Hopefully, I'm better than my father was as far as encouraging. Yeah, but that so. that telling you that he didn't discourage you, you know, because some uh, what for? You ain't never gonna, you ain't gonna be worth a damn. Yeah, yeah, blah, 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 don't. That's wrong. Been there, done that. Yeah. And that affects you. Yeah. I mean, that stays with you for life. I've, I'm always on my boy because my grandson's the greatest thing that walks the face of the earth. And I'm always on him, hey, you're too hard on that boy, you're too hard on that boy, you're too hard on him. And uh, The detectives have allowed the conversation to go off track so that Palma can feel at ease. Since Kirsten's body has not been recovered, they don't want to risk him shutting down and refusing to speak. So hopefully he, he's a better father than I am. He, was, he is. So, but... Uh, I was very fortunate to uh, get to get some things off my chest over the years. And as I get older, I, uh, you know, my dad has even talked to me about things that he has wished he had redone, you know. Yeah, I think everybody has. My only, well, the only thing that really... And that's you're probably, probably getting completely off the deal. But when I left Walters, when I got in trouble with Walters, I was going out with an angel. I mean, it's a good woman, huh? My biggest mistake. Yeah, I fucked up big time. Did you? That's the only time I can really say that I, I pushed up. Lose your temper. Well, yeah, that's basically what it would have happened. You know, he was picking on her, and I had, like a dumb kid, had to go do something about it, you know. Well, not necessarily a dumb kid. Sometimes men got to do Well, now, you know, there's other ways of doing yeah. stuff, but, and of course, I've been drinking. Right. That's not the best uh, decision-making no. process. Conducive to great decision-making, believe me. I was telling my partner as we was driving that out to your work that uh, I was 16 years old and we'd cut school and back then that's where we we went drinking. Dirty Bird? Dirty Bird. And Did you have a losing jewelry out there? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I put my Mustang in the ditch out there and I shouldn't have. And I tried and to I was hide. telling them I've probably found uh, 200 gold rings since I've been out there. Wow. wow. That's awesome. Do they wash up on the bank with current and waves or do you think they get lost there? Well, they get lost, and then they get covered up, you know, because of the wave action, and then the wave action uncovers it again, and then you have to be at the right time at the right place. Yeah. So every time, you know, after it, the wind's blowing, you know, I check my shoreline. Because I, I hate glass in the water. Yeah. Okay. That's another one of my pet peeves. Yeah, stepping on that. Yeah. Well, first first month I was there, I was out at Turkey Pass picking up trash, and people were, were in from out of state. Kid goes in the water, what's the first thing he does? Steps on a damn rusty hook. Mm -hmm. And after that, I thought, no. So every day, every day, I'd go out there and I'd have a couple five gallon buckets and I'd fill them suckers up. 
Okay, you know, I do that enough, you know, I get it all. But you don't. You'd be surprised. You get out there and you have it spotless, next day, next win, like nothing ever, you know, you never did that, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, to get back to what we're here about, I'm not, I mean, you've been living there all these years since Kirsten went missing. Um, I, I'm curious about your your thoughts on what happened, who might be involved, that kind of thing. I don't know, to tell you the truth. Like I said, I didn't know. But the one thing that's always bothered me, that she left, the mom. Mm -hmm. She went to Jones, I guess, with her dad or something like that. I, you could have got me off out of my house. I mean, I know, what if she comes back or, you know, what if somebody makes a call or, you know, something like that. I, there was no way I'd left that house. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that bothers me. Yeah. She felt like she shouldn't have left, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever at any point over these years or, or back when it occurred um, have any knowledge of what happened or know no. who was involved? No. Or were you in any way involved? No. No. So you're not responsible no. for a person's disappearance? No. Didn't play any part in that? No. Like I said, didn't know. Didn't have, like I said, I just barely, you know, see, might have seen her once, twice. Playing with the kids, but other than that, I didn't. I didn't know. What? Just out of curiosity, what do you think the motivation was of whoever did this? I mean, why would this have happened? Well, Dan, I couldn't have told you, but after over the years, you know, and hearing the rumors and this and that and the other, it, me, it always boils down to drugs. You know, I heard that she was on meth and cocaine and all this stuff. Shannon McCrossan admitted to using drugs socially and having the concern that some of the people she had associated with may have been responsible. Dawn's wife was the same thing. You know, she said, yeah, she had been over there, you know, that night, and they got lit up. So apparently she did get lit up because, you know, if somebody did come in, mm -hmm. I mean, wouldn't you have heard it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So but I know some people. she left Kirsten home alone, you think? Or? No, I don't know. I'm sure she did. But I don't know. Like I said, I didn't know. And I really didn't pay much attention to, to Don and his wife. It's just, duh. Uh, uh, where did they live? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's Caddy Corner for me. Straight across the house. street? Not straight, just Caddy Corner. A little White House, Caddy Corner for me. Okay. And they had two or three kids. And I'd come home one day. I re was rewarding myself. I did something. And I was stopped at uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Got me a family pack of chicken. I was going to go down. And the kids, whenever I walked up, they were just, the way they were eyeballing me, you know, like, they hadn't ate nothing. I mean, they were, really, if you'd have, if you'd have seen them, you'd have thought that, too, because, I mean, they were skinny. So I got me a piece of chicken, I was chewing on it, and they just, you want some chicken? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that all right that they can have this? Yeah. So I, I just gave them the whole damn thing. Yeah. That's good. Because I'm, I'm, no, it's not, no, it's something everybody do. When you got kids that are, you know, And I know he, he was a welder by trade, but he, you know, talking to him a time or two, you know, things weren't going right for him, and, you know, he didn't have money and all that. So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have a problem, you know. Who were we talking about was a welder? Don. Don? Okay. Um, from looking back over the history, I, I understood that uh, Shannon's brother, I guess, stayed with you for Aaron, a short time. Aaron. Aaron. Yeah, Aaron. Tell us about that. How did that happen? And <coughs> he was in the neighborhood, you know, he's looking, apparently looking for, you know, his niece. Mm -hmm. So I'm out there one day and he stops and he talks, you know anything, blah, 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 you know, and we just got to talking and, you know, he's living in a damn, you know, under a bridge and, dude, you know, I found out already that he, that night, that he'd been locked up, mm -hmm. you know, so he wasn't a suspect in my books. So, yeah, I opened my house to, you know, if you ain't got no, because I did that for anybody, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it's sick to say, but that's the kind of guy I am. Palma keeps trying to paint himself as a compassionate, caring neighbor, because most people wouldn't believe that such a nice person could be capable of something so horrible. The detectives have seen this time and time again.
and they are not moved by his stories. So he needed a place to say, there's a couch, you know, you can trash here for a couple days and, you know, try to do what you got to do to, you know, right. figure out what happened to your knees. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, to me, that's, you like y'all, that's serious. Sure, absolutely. That's a serious how, how long after a person went missing did this happen? Was it like the same week? Was yeah, it probably in the same week. In the same week? Yeah. And then I, can't, I can't verify that because, like I said, that's that's been a while. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, it was probably about in the same week. How long did Aaron stay there with you? Uh, just a couple of days. And then, you know, he'd go off and then he'd come back. And then I wound up having to just tell him he couldn't come back because he was on meth, too. Didn't, at the time, didn't know it. And I think too because you you you've heard that Shannon was using drugs too. I mean I don't know for for a fact, but that's what I heard. And it, I'll just say this: if you ever partied with them, if you knew they were doing drugs or witnessed it, just just tell us that. I don't because know. We're, we're not. No, I don't. I no. Like I said, there's and y'all know you got people that do drugs, you got people that drink, and you don't do drink, and you don't you know do I drink. Yeah. But no, I never party with her. And yeah. I never party with Don and his wife. Okay. Now, did you know Aaron at all before? No. So you'd never met him, never talked to him no. before either? No. Did he ever confide in you anything about um, the case or anything about Just Shannon? He couldn't, he couldn't clear his sister. Those words will always, you know, I can't, that's the way he said it. Mm -hmm. I can't clear my sister. So he was suspicious of, of Shannon, huh? Did he ever give you any any real factual information that would be beneficial to the case? No, I'm I, like I said, I'm here on my own free will. If I had any information, yeah, I'd give it to you. Because that'd be the same thing if something were to happen to my daughter. My God, yeah. I don't know how she does it. I mean, if she's innocent, God bless her soul. I don't know how she does it because I just thinking about it. What would I do if my daughter come up missing? Oh, yeah. And she's my world. That's all I've got. My old lady can go to hell, but my kid, that's no. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's I mean, all hard to jail because I'd be carrying Midwest City. It's hard to imagine. Um, we've talked a lot about kind of the background. I, I want to kind of talk to you about um, some new information developed in this case, okay? Um, as you know, Detective Miller got some buckle swabs from you yeah. uh, a couple months back or whenever it was. There was a reason for that, okay? Um, and we collected DNA samples from lots of people. But we had submitted, resubmitted some evidence from the case and uh, got a DNA hit, okay? Okay. Um, the reason those buckle swabs were being collected was we were trying to find the person yeah. responsible. Okay. We, we talked about had you ever been in the backyard, have you ever been in the house, all those things. And you said you hadn't. No, Not while they were there, no. Okay. Well, I don't, I don't believe you. Oh. Tony, I don't think you're telling the whole truth, okay. Your DNA is in the backyard. Palma's DNA was found in the backyard. This ties him to the case. And by now, he probably wishes that he had said earlier that he did some yard work for the Hatfields. The morning that she was discovered missing, okay? And on her window, and on the panties she'd been wearing the night before that were recovered in the backyard. No. No, not me, because I was not, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's the truth. I find it far fetched, but no. I, I don't know. I didn't know him. And maybe you didn't know him, Tony. But we need And to I didn't have no business over there at all. That may be also. What we need to talk about is what you were doing in that backyard that night and what happened. We need to get to the truth of I what have happened. no idea what you're talking about. Were you there trying to help Kirsten? No. Like I said, I didn't know anything about them people at all. Nothing. Nothing. Well, never met them. Never said hi, bye, nothing. Well, here's the here's our problem with that. Is 
how did your DNA get there? Then? Don't know. I mean, is, it, is this something that's gone on, Tony, that uh, is this one of those things from 17 years ago that a split second decision has haunted you for 17 years? I don't know what y'all are talking about. Were you there to help her? No. Like I said, I don't. I have nothing to do with them people. Nothing. I didn't know them at all. Okay, so how did your DNA? I go have no idea. idea. Once the news about the DNA match comes out, Palma begins to lie repeatedly, denying any involvement with the family whatsoever. There. I have no idea. Tony, your blood is on her window. Your blood is on Kirsten's panties. I don't see how that could happen. Well, it happens when you're injured in some way and your blood gets transferred to her window in those panties. Yeah, here's and it what gets I left think behind. happened. I think you were there to help. No. I wasn't there, period. So how yeah. did your blood get there? I have no idea. Tony, you were there. This, this is scientific evidence. It's not a debate. It's not anything that can be argued. And, and here's the point where I really feel you're a good guy. I mean, you've worked 29 years at a hard job. You came up rough like I did. You came up poor. Yeah, but that's came beside the point. I had nothing to but, do with any of this. But here's the thing. I don't think you're, that was your intention. You're going to have to explain this. If I don't you were know there, how I do it. If you were there... <clears throat> If you were there because you heard her yelling for help from your backyard and you go over there to see because you knew that she, her mother was a meth head. The detective gives Palma a chance to justify his presence in the house as an innocent and even helpful act. Palma doesn't take the bait. He isn't going to admit being anywhere near Kirsten that night. And that she is probably at home alone and you went over there to help. No. And you went to the backyard to avoid a conflict with the mother. And you were just going to take care of this no. little girl because just like you, growing up, you didn't want her being treated that way. That's, I mean, that's, that's how understandable things become. Yeah, I could understand that, but I don't, I don't understand how you're getting you, my DNA. Maybe, well, how, exactly. How was your blood? That I have no idea. Well, I'm not I wasn't there. there at all. We, we weren't there either. All we have is this, the evidence that was collected. Mm -hmm. I didn't collect it. It was collected 17 years ago, Tony. But it's there. And we have to deal with this. And you're saying you were never there. No. There's no reason it was, should be there. No. It's not helping your cause. What's going to help your cause is to explain to us how it's there. I... Because the don't fact, have a clue. Because the fact it's there is the gorilla in the room. Now, if there is a reasonable explanation as to why you were there, and you were there to help Kirsten. No, you were there for you had a relationship with Shannon. No, never knew her. You were there as a peeping tom or no. something of this nature. No then those are ex explainable. Yeah, I understand that, but I, I, no, never there. Never there. Never there. Can't give us any reason no. why your blood would be there. No. Tony, the worst thing you can do for yourself right now in this position is lie and not be truthful. I'm being truthful, dude. Well, I don't know how, I, don't, I can't explain that, why that, y'all are finding this. Well, your blood is in that backyard the morning that she's discovered missing, okay? This is your chance, Tony. I understand that. To explain, but explain what that. happened. Maybe you didn't mean no, for whatever I happened to happen. There. Were you, you were there. You were there. Was you in a depression? Was that a, a period when you were going through a depression? And drinking and getting depressed and you don't remember until later what no. actually occurred? I don't even think I was drinking that night. To tell you the truth, I might have been, but I don't think so. And I was in bed. And so I'm pretty sure I don't sleep well. This isn't a deal where you got drunk the night before and 
and actually went through with some urges you had? No. Whether you're attracted to little girls no. or whatever you're I've thing never about. been attracted to little girls or little boys. The detectives hammer Palma with accusations, and he bats each one away. He knows that they only have the DNA evidence against him so far, and he can't be sure they aren't lying about even having that. Well, once again, how is your blood there? I don't know. Do well, you not do you not believe me when I tell you that we have your DNA? No, I don't. You don't believe me? Okay. And I I I can show you the. Oh, I'm sure you could. If that's with that, but I don't I don't know how that could have happened. Well, there's I more, wasn't there. There's more to the story, Tony, and that's what we're hoping to get from you today. And this is your opportunity to be truthful and to take responsibility for whatever happened. Yeah, if, if I was true. responsible, that'd be different. Okay. Well, with that said, were you there and somebody else was there and actually took her and maybe you left I your DNA behind? I was not there. I'm not into little girls and I'm not a window peeper. Okay. Well, is there some other explanation for why you were in that backyard that night? I wasn't in that backyard. I don't know. My blood could have been there or what. I know I went to bed. I know when the dog woke me up, I didn't go out my back door. I let dog in and I went back to bed. Well, Tony, I, I don't know how to impress upon you any more than we've got the, the physical evidence there. And we have to deal with that, Tony. We really do. And we have to get to a point where we can explain that. I understand that. Well, help me do that. I wish I could. I don't know. I don't know what y'all are talking about. Okay. I don't sleepwalk. Tony, I think that uh, you've been living with this a long time. Living with what? With what happened. And I think that it's it's one of those things, Tony, where you're scared. And, but I think it's, there's some verses that says, you know, at some point, everything is known. And uh, I truly believe that. And uh, one of these days that you're going to have to come and realize that. And I don't, I think that your best bet is simply tell the truth. I've been telling the truth. Okay. Well... Unfortunately, what you're telling me doesn't align with any of the physical evidence that we have. And unless there's a huge conspiracy to the FBI and the OSBI and our officers from 17 years ago to frame you, we have to explain this. And I really think you're, you need to talk about it. Because I think that's the best thing for you to do is simply tell us the truth. I think you're going to feel better about it. You're going to have a weight lifted off your shoulders. I have no idea what you're talking about. I am. Okay, you got somebody's blood, but I, not mine. I was not there. Okay. Not that night, not the night before, not the night after. Someone. Palma might have had some room to maneuver in his lies if the blood had only been outside. But with it being on the window and Kirsten's underwear, there's no other reasonable explanation other than his guilt. Talk you into doing something? Going with him? No. no. I wouldn't do that. So how do, how do we explain your blood? I have no idea. Well, the blood's going to have to be explained, Tony. It's going to have to be. Yeah, I mean, it's, no, no, I'm trying it's, to go in my head out <coughs> how anything or, but I, 
whenever she was living there, I didn't go there. I was there when William was there. But, and even then, I don't, don't see how to cut myself on a, a, a window. I don't know either. Okay. Well, I'm telling you that uh, the physical evidence is going to have to be explained. I think that you made a mistake. I think you've lived with this a long time. And I believe that your depression issues and things and the way you were raised and the abuse that you took as a child I've never been that depressed. And it has something to do with it. I really do. This is our OSBI results. I, I kind of, um, no disrespect, I get the impression maybe you don't believe me when I told you what I told you. So I want to just bring you the copy directly from OSBI and we've highlighted it here for you. Okay? I just want you to understand that this isn't this isn't a bluff, Tony. You see those odds? Those odds, um, I can just tell you from my years of experience, I've never seen at that level which means this is your DNA. Okay, this is your I blood, Tony. Okay. Don't know. Here is, um, that's Kirsten's panties that her mom identified that she had on that night. And that's where your blood was found, as well as on her window seal. So this isn't just a, and, and just so you'll know, we also located some blood on the fence picket, and it's still out for testing. But I suspect that there's a good chance that get, that'll come back to you. I can't explain that. And that's... The detective confronts Palma with a copy of the evidence as proof that they aren't bluffing. But Palma isn't going to break easily. He has gotten away with this crime for nearly 20 years, and he isn't going to let that change if he can help it. No matter how impossible, the odds are stacked against him. That's what I want to give you an opportunity to do is explain it because it's scientific evidence. We know for a fact it's your blood. And of course, Tony, I don't have to tell you that when these paintings are identified as, as uh, Kirsten's, um, and Mom says, yeah, she was wearing those the night before, and the next morning at dawn, your blood is found in them at the back fence of the property. I mean, if you're in my position as the detective, what does that tell you? Uh, don't look good for me. Uh, <coughs> and I, you know, I just want to plead with you to be honest. I want to be honest. I want and you to be honest. And I'm doing honest. No. I don't. You know, I mean, Tony, I think this has gone on for so many years and has been unsolved, uh, as you well know, for, for a long, long time. Um, and I'm sure you've told people countless times, I had nothing to do with it, I don't know anything about it, et cetera, et cetera. But this isn't the time to keep saying the same old routine because this isn't going away. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, this is scientific, scientific evidence, Tony. That's your DNA. That's your cells from your body. Tell us, I mean, tell me what happened. How did you get injured? I'm trying to figure it out myself, what, what, what all this is about. I mean, you were, you were in, in some way injured for your blood to be on her window and for your blood to be in her panties. Mike, what I want to know from you was there some kind of a dispute between you and Kirsten? I had no dealings with those people. Didn't know nothing about them. I believe at that. All. I believe that. 
but I also believe that this is your DNA on her window seal and your DNA on her panties in the backyard. I don't doubt that you didn't know them, but that didn't take this away. This isn't going anywhere. And we've got to get to the truth of the matter. I mean, for you to sit here and say, I've never been in that backyard and I wasn't there, it's a lie, Tony. Yeah, that's not the truth. Yeah. It, it's not the truth. And i got to believe, if I can speak frankly, you seem like a good guy. And I, I know if I've made a mistake like that, and we all make mistakes, we're all sinners. But i got to believe this has been bugging you for your entire life since it happened. Right. If, if it doesn't, then you're a cold-blooded killer, Tony. Is that what you're telling me? I ain't never killed nobody. Okay. So you're telling me what happened that morning or that night hadn't been bothering you all these years. That's not me. I don't... Was, I, that, was that the alcohol, or were you experimenting with no, something else? I don't do mind? drugs, and I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm still trying to fathom in my mind what... Blood. My blood. Yeah. I was nowhere around there. Didn't know them people. Didn't have no dealings with them people. Didn't care I'm about them people. Tony, this, this is your I opportunity. Understand. Okay. I'm, you can sit here and say that same crap over and over. You and I both know that's not the truth. No, it's the truth will have to come out. I don't understand this. The truth is what needs to come out. Yeah. And you're the only person that can do that. You're the only person that can bring Kirsten back and let her family have a proper burial for her. You're the person that can help do that. You made a mistake, Tony. Uh, you made a huge mistake. Do what's right now. Take responsibility for what happened and help us get Kirsten back. The detective tries to play on any feelings of guilt Palma might have to get him to confess. If he has any, Palma's sense of remorse is not enough to override his sense of self-preservation. I can't help you. I don't know. I don't understand. You said that's not me, and when, and when somebody says that to me, what it says is that's not I, I wasn't in my right mind. I was no. under the influence. <laughs> not in the influence. Like I said, if I had a beer, I might have had two. I went to bed. I always go to bed. I'm a 10 o'clock bedtime guy. The only reason here lately I haven't been going to sleep is because I have to have a treatment. And I wake up every two and a half hours, three hours, take treatment, go back to sleep. I have nothing bothered me other than breathing problems. So your conscience hasn't been bothering you for all these years? No. Let me ask you this. Your wife told us that every year on Kirsten's anniversary that you're upset about it, that you go through a phase of being depressed and upset about it. <sighs> and the reason that is, it's on the news, and yeah, how do you feel about it? Well, yeah, I'm going to be upset. I mean, it's a missing child. Good. While seeing such a thing on the news once a year would cause a general sense of sadness for anyone who had lived in the area, Palma has a peculiarly strong reaction for someone who claims to have had no interaction with the family. As much as he tries to hide it, there is a feeling of guilt and resentment of not being allowed to forget. But I mean, as far as me, oh, what, what day is this? No. It's not just a missing child, Tony. It's a missing child with your blood on her windowsill and your blood on her panties. So should that affect you? Absolutely. Yeah. And that tells me you're human. That tells me that you have a heart and you have a conscience. But you're not showing it sitting here and denying that you've never been in there. I don't know anything about it. That wasn't me. That's not the truth, Tony. This is the time to I get this off your that. chest. Yes, that's, but I, I don't get it. You need to think about that, because I'm just telling you, when all this gets presented to the judge and jury... I understand. Do you think yeah, anybody's going to believe what you're saying? Good, don't me. No. Yeah. Nobody's going to believe you, I just, because it's not the truth, Tony.
If you want to carry it to your grave and not do what's right, that's on you. But you need to think about what you're doing because right now, these yeah, decisions think you're about making. How's my damn blood or me? Because I was not there. And I know on that night I was in my same mind. Did I read that the other day? Yeah. I don't want to spend it. Well, it's pretty clear. Yeah. You know how big sex thing it is? No such thing. Huh? <coughs> no such thing. Yeah, it's too big. I mean, you can line people up from planet Earth all the way to the moon. You remember me, don't you? I mean, we, I've been working on this case for two years. Here, look at me real quick. I've been working on this for two years. I've got a little girl that's about her age, Kirsten's yep. age at the time. And this case is all I think. This case has taken over me. And it, oh, I can it, imagine. It, it, it's all I think about, you know. And I told you earlier on, you know, all the cases I work is crimes against children cases. So my whole life, I go home, I have kids. I come to work, I deal with kids, you know. And you seem like, like, like you said in our past, you know, conversations we've had, all you do is you care about kids. You take care of the neighborhood kids, and you got a heart just like me. Yeah, and that, that's what I, we're trying to figure out, Tony, is how is your your blood, your DNA, get on it? And you were there when I, when I took your sample from you, right? We had an unknown male profile DNA on her panties and on her windowsill. It don't make sense to me. All I'm concerned about is where she at, Tony. I know, I'm sure. Where's she at? Help me find her. I mean, we got pictures of window sills and of the window sill that day. You know, we go right down the line with all these pictures. You know, you say, oh, I mean, everything. Of course, today it's a totally different ballgame. There'd be 500 pictures of a windowsill, and it, it's all there. I mean, did you figure out the, the print? Yeah, those are kids' prints there. I was not there the day before, that day, next day. I know. Have you talked with the FBI since the last time you and I spoke? No. Okay. What all have you done for the FBI? Have you taken a polygraph? Have you been to their office? Mm -hmm. The only time I was talked to the FBI was when they were in my house. Okay. But you never taken a polygraph or anything like that. Didn't, didn't we ask you about a polygraph when I spoke with you last? I don't think we did. No, but the Tristy deal. Okay. Oh, that's right. You did take a polygraph of that. Good. Yeah. But, we, we need to figure this out. Yeah, you do. But you're, you're my key. You're the only one that can help me, Tony. I want you to help me. If I could, I would, because it's making me look real bad. Well, yeah. Well, I'm not going to hear, I'm not going to you, I'm not going to be mean or anything, but I, I, I need the truth. I need, I, 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 need to, I need the truth, too. I need to find her. I need to find Kirsten. Help me find her. I can't help you. Was there somebody else involved? I can't help you on that either. I No, I didn't help anybody or 
help myself take this girl. How do you explain the bar? I don't. I can't. You got a, let me see your arm. You have a scar on your arm. What happened there? I was picking up the toilet bowl and it cracked. When was that? Last year. Hey, hey, I'm in the room. I'm Major David Huff. I'm, 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 like, I'm, like, I'm pretty much these guys' boss. Um, the guys have been out there kind of talking to me about the interview. Um, what do you say? Let's let's take a break for just a minute. I don't want you getting upset at us. We really are trying to get to the truth, but I don't want you getting upset with us. Get a, take a drink of water. We'll just relax for a minute, okay? And um, we'll just take a deep breath. All right. I, I know. I said, smoke a cigarette. Yeah, come on, come on out with us. You're going to have to go with us, though, okay? Okay. Yeah, I understand. I want to make sure we don't have any juveniles out here. Hold on just a second. Yeah, hold on just a second. The detectives have made the decision to take a break since Palma is getting worked up and defensive. Nearly everything he has said has been a denial of the truth, and they aren't making any headway. You want me to wait? No, go ahead, man. You're fine. We normally don't let people do this, but I know you're stressed. I know it's against the well, law anymore. Well, I know you're stressed, so we're going to allow it. Well, I smoke three packs a day. Do you? Half since I was 12. I, don't, I, can't, I can't explain this. And the only thing that I'm thinking right now is, yeah, I'm being set up because we want to close this case. That's the only thing that's coming in my head right now. Seriously. Okay. Well, um, I understand what you're saying. I'm going to be honest with you when this first stuff, the stuff first came out, um, the DNA, I want you to understand how it works because not everybody does this, so it wouldn't be uncommon for you not to know. Uh, the normal person that doesn't do police work doesn't know. The DNA that we got off of these panties, that was taken all the way back when it happened, okay? And it was put into a container where we could keep it indefinitely, all right? Um, it's been there ever since. The FBI took it um, when they were helping us. It was there, okay? we had what was called an unknown DNA sample. We knew that it was human DNA, we can tell that. Astra. Oh yeah, thank you. We knew that it was human DNA, okay? Um, and we knew it was human DNA from a male. We can know that. What we don't know, when we got it back then, we didn't know the name attached to it. We didn't know whose DNA that was, okay? When the FBI and Detective Miller went out and got those swabs, okay, got them, they got them from a bunch of people, all right? You being one of them. Then it was tested against a sample that was taken off the windowsill and off of the panties, which, by the way, I don't know if they told you this or not, but also has Kirsten's DNA on it. Because little kids, they do a little pee pee in their pants and skid marks. So her DNA's on it, your DNA's on it, and it's also on the windowsill. That was all done way back when 
this all happened. It's just now that the DNA um, results have come back. And I don't know if they told you this. You seem like an intelligent man. So to help you comprehend what we're talking about when we say we know this to be a fact, the number sextillion, what this is saying, if you take a one and you put 21 zeros behind it, yeah, it's, it's, it's yours. <coughs> um, any, anybody in the world, any scientist is going to say that that is your blood. Now, the DNA match is conclusive and there is no room for it to be possible to belong to anyone else. It might be easy to explain away for some locations, but there is no good reason for Palma's DNA to be on the underwear. Obviously, when we have a case like this, we're not going to, Mr. Palma, we're not going to lay out everything that we know and everything we have. Um, that's just not the way it works. It'd be counterproductive. Um, we're not going to do it. There's more than this, but we want to try to get you to digest, kind of digest one thing at a time. Now, Having said that, um, do we know all the circumstances surrounding what happened that night? We don't. Um, only, only God, the person who did it, and Kirsten probably know that. But I'm going to tell you this. We do know that Kirsten was wearing those that night. We do know that your blood's on there and her DNA is on there. And that is just an absolute fact. Right. Yeah, I understand that. Um, and I, I tell you, you know, just listening and talking to you, um, you know, 17, 18 years now has passed. Um, I'm going on my 25th year here. Um, I worked every case you could probably imagine. Um, so is Detective Miller, like he was telling you. Um, we're not brilliant men by any stretch of the imagination, but when it comes to this stuff, um, we're, we're pretty darn smart. And this is what it boils down to. Um, this much time can pass, and if something horrible happens in your life that you don't want to remember, you can put it in a little box and put it out here and try to keep it away from you, um, but it happens. Um, I've had to put horrible things that have happened in my life and put it in a little box out here and just hope that it goes away and that pray that one day it doesn't come out because I've seen some, some terrible things. I can imagine. And here's what I think, and you know what I think may not matter to you, but it's from the heart. Um, this is what I think. I think that you're not an evil person. I don't think you're an evil person. I've heard about your work history. Uh, you know, I know all that stuff. I know you're a dependable person, a hardworking man. I think on this one night, this one time, for whatever reason, that some demon inside you, you made a mistake. The, the, fact, is, the fact is there. Here, here's what, here's what, how we look at it. You know, I'm about to retire. Um, you know, I, I know he told you he's got a young daughter. We want to, we want to know where this baby's at. We want to know where I'm she's at. Sure. No, I can't help you. I don't understand any of this. Can I ask you something? Sir. Sure. Why did why did you tell your wife that that uh, the FBI had given you a polygraph and you passed? She just told us that you said that. No, I told her that y'all had given me a polygraph, but it was <coughs> excuse me for something altogether different for the Tristy deal. I got two polygraphs that day. So you think she just misunderstood? Probably. I told her the FBI was in my house. They shook my house down. Garage, shed, all that.
Where, where and the only time this comes up is when she asks about it. And it's usually at the anniversary because there's newspaper people or television people are knocking on the door. Do you still live here? Do you know? Blah, blah, blah. And that's it. Who all still lives around here? That's you lived there longest, right? As far as I know. But There's no one that still lives there that's there back when you were there. Well, Tony, after we need your help. You have another one. I do. I smoke three packs a day. More fortunately for me. Hey, I, I, if I could help you, I would help you. Well, but I don't like sitting in this situation. I don't. I don't like this. Don't, this don't look good at, for me at all. No. And I've, I've done research on you know what happened at, when using Walters and stuff like that, and. I've listened to part of the interview, you know, here this morning, and is there a chance that maybe you blacked out and did it? That you went over and did something? You said you said something about you don't think you sleepwalk. No, I'm just going through scenarios. Okay, I mean, and that was kind of being sarcastic. Well, take a little bring up a good point. I mean, um, from what we've read from the report that happened there in Walters, um, that was a pretty horrific deal that happened. Yeah. And it kind of shows that it's somebody that can lose it. Yeah, I was for a whatever. kid that was drunk. And I still pay for that. That will never go away. comes down to is this, you know, we've had a lot of people in this room and interviewed a lot of people about stuff similar to this, unfortunately, and there's two kinds of people we deal with. There's the people that when we prevent, pre present the evidence that we got and they know that they've been um, found out, um, they stand up and take some type of responsibility and move on. Uh, or they deny it, and to me, um, that's the folks that are really evil. And I just didn't get the feeling that that was you. But I guess I could be wrong. It wouldn't be the first time. I know I can't. I can't explain it. And I'm still sitting here thinking, April's full, y'all come up with April full. Because that's... No, I'm not on something this serious. No, there's no, there's no April full. Where, where, where do you think, if, if someone was to, if someone, the person that did do this... The detectives can see that they aren't going to get a confession. The case can go forward without one. But the recovery of Kirsten's body is going to require being pointed in the right direction. In an effort to get Palma to reveal her location, they ask him where someone else might hide the body. Where would they take her and dump her at? Or if they would? Couldn't tell you. I mean, I watch all the cop shows and stuff like that, or what I do watch, and there's, there's no telling. So you bring up cop shows, so I'm sure you... My wife likes cop shows. Yeah, you've watched... A lot of CFI, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So you know, and most of the the classes and all the research and stuff I've done with you know missing children, where they're usually located at, they're located, you know, where the suspect lives two doors down, three doors down, or in the same neighborhood. You know, so I mean, you've hit the profile. You know, your past history shows that. You know, but. That's a little strike against me. No, but like I said, people change, Tony. People change. 
You talk about your home life and how you grew up. I grew up with a single mom that raised nine kids by herself. And I'm about the only one out of, I'm about the only one out of my family that, that's graduated school, that has a successful job. Oh, I, you know, people tell me, you can't do that. You're a piece of crap. Yeah, and I showed them that, no. That right. It's not about anything like that. I was not sexually molested or abused. I was hated, but I found good in this. You know, he taught me some shit, and that's helped me, you know, go through my life. I know some stuff. I know carpentry, I know mechanics, you know. Okay. I cuss him to, to this day because he hated me, yeah. but... Jack of all trades. That didn't... That didn't turn me into a monster. Because right. I was hated. Yeah, and I, I don't think you're a monster. I think this is just one time something happened, and it went a little too far, and something had to happen, you know? And actually, actually happened, I'm in shock is what I am. Like I said, I am still thinking y'all going to say, yeah, well, but this is just a a joke, or not a joke, but trying to get me to say uh, something. Or I, I'm, not, I'm not here to lie. I'm not lying to you about anything. Um, like I told you from the get-go, you know, my job was to investigate this case and to go out, and I guarantee you, there were probably 30, 40 people that I went out and I got swaps from, just like you on that day. I'm in shock. I don't know what to say. Well, you're Tony. You're the last person. To, you're the last person to touch her. You're the last person that's to touch right her. That's her. That's her paintings. You're you're the absolute last person that touched Kirsten. Um. That with other things that we have and that we know and that we've learned, um, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, this guy especially has been pushing to allow uh, him to be able to talk to you and, and try to make some sense about it and give you an opportunity to tell the truth. I was, heck, I was kind of against it, to be honest with you, um, because that you don't get that kind of scientific evidence every day. That is absolutely the most okay. astronomical thing that you could imagine. It's about like every grain of sand on the, the whole planet Earth um, or the odds that it's not you that were the last person that touched her panties. That was the last person that went through that window. Uh, the odds are, they're uh, uncomprehendable. Calmly, the detective tries to show Palma just how strong the evidence is against him. Palma is quieter now, knowing that protesting his innocence is useless, but he still can't give them the truth. So is that, is that the way it's going to be, Tony? Is it going to be, is it going to be a deal where to, till the day you die, you're going to um, uh, proclaim my innocence? Yeah. Well, I can tell you. I can tell you this. Well, that's fair enough. I'm not going to argue with you or get into a battle with you. Um, I can tell you this. Um, everything that we were going to do here today, and everything that you were going to tell us, is going to go into a report. Um, it could either be a report saying that um, he manned up and had some remorse, or it can be that it's that evil person that we were afraid of. And that's up to you. That is told that ball is totally in your court. But it's gonna read one way or another. And that's up to you. Because it goes from us to the district attorney and then to the court. So it can it can read how you want. But giving you this opportunity, that was this gentleman's idea. Um, and I gave him that opportunity and I'll be able to go home and sleep tight tonight knowing that I gave you that shot. 
And if you don't want to take that shot, then that's fine. Um, I, I can't force you to, Tony. All, all we want is the truth. And all, all we want is to, to finally be able to let a mother bury her child. That's what we want. Properly. I know y'all really think I'm guilty, but I know I'm not. So I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. Well, Tony, I'm, I'm still in shock. I don't. I, I, I know you're in shock. Doesn't Tony. compute because because it's been 17 years and you thought it was over. That's why you're in shock. No, what I'm in shock about is you got my blood. Yeah. How's that possible? I, I can't tell you that, but I can tell you that it is absolute. It is absolute. There is no maybe. There is no, there's a possibility. It is absolutely 100%. Some time to think about what we talked about. Do, do you have any more? Do you have any more to smoke? Not yet. Go ahead. Go ahead and smoke for a minute. Let us go out here and talk. Once you get your head together, we'll give you one more opportunity to to think about what I just said. Okay. Palma is given another chance to think things through. But he has lived a lie for too long to let everything unravel now. Kirsten's body from Palma's property. He could have hidden her body anywhere in the area, including job locations where it would have been easy to conceal a small body. 
Um, you're that person that has no remorse, and that's the way the report's going to read. Yes. Because what I'm seeing from you is you could care less if we ever find her. And yeah, I do. You could care less. Just put a cigarette out for me. Turn around for me. Put your hand on your back. for murder, kidnap, Kirsten Hatfield. A month after being arrested, Palma attempted to cut his wrists. He was placed on suicide watch. In October 2017, Palma was put on trial, where he was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. In January 2019, he was found dead in his prison cell. He had been strangled and beaten to death by his cellmate, which often happens to inmates who have committed crimes against children. And that's the end of today's video. If you liked what you watched and want to support the channel, hit the like button and check out my Patreon link in the description. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.